Hey everyone, welcome to All Techies. I'm Pankaj Rai and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create navigation drawer with the next generation UI toolkit, Jetpack Compose. In this video, I'll show you how easy it is to create the navigation drawer. No such complication as compared to the existing one where we need to have a coordinate layout, then create a headers and then body part. Here, everything is simplified. So let's see how we can create navigation drawer. So first of all, I've created an empty project and uh, in the set title, the theme which you're seeing here is something which comes by default. It's something related to the name of the project appended with the theme. And you can change the theme based on your requirement. So I'm leaving this as it is. And surface is something which is under the composable. And this surface is something which draws a background color. So you can think as if you have say a frame layout and you set a background as a white or some other color to it. So same here, we don't have any view group system. So surface is one such composable where you can set the background and this can contain only single composable. So if you want to have more than that, you need to have it enclosed with to some other composable. Okay, now let's start with our navigation component. So here I'm going to show you how you can create the navigation droid using the scaffold composable. So I'm going to use scaffold. And why do we need this actually and what it is? So scaffold is another composable. And the advantage with this is like, say if you want to have a body content to the center of the screen, then app bar at the top of the screen, navigation drawer, which comes from the left side, and even the bottom app bar, which should be at the bottom of the screen. Then using the scaffold, you do not need to maintain the position for them. You just give the content for bottom app bar or top bar, body content or navigation drawer, it automatically place them to the appropriate position. So by this way, you didn't have to deal with managing the position for all of them. Okay, so now let me create another composable for the top app bar. So composable, fun, so I'm giving name, this as a app bar, and I'm going to take title as a parameter. Now let's create a top app bar. So for this, we already have a composable. And one thing to remember is that I'm annotating this function with composable, that's because composable can be called from another composable. And the name of this function should start with a capital letter. So there's no such mandatory rule, but it's just one of the way to define that this function is a composable. And I'm going to take title here as text with text as title. So that's it. I don't want to change the background or any other parameter for this or elevations. I want to leave all those things as it is. So now I can pass this to the scaffold. Stop app bar. I can specify this as app bar. And title, let me give this as like nav drawer sample. And I have to put this inside the braces because this accept the composable. So top bar is done. Now the next part is the body content. Again, it requires a composable. Apart from that, we also need a drawer. So we'll have a drawer content. So this is the place where we are going to specify what should be shown when a navigation drawer uh, component is visible. So let's create the nav option first, and then I'm going to add this nav options to the navigation drawer. So composable, fun, nav, option. And it requires title, also the scaffold state. And we'll see about this, that why do we need this? And now what do I'm going to do is that because I just want this to be of type text. So let me use text composable, title something which I'm going to specify. 
and uh, let me also add the styles for it. Text style as font size. I want this to be of 18 SP. And font weight as bold. So that's it. Now we have our individual menu title ready for us. So inside the navigation drawer, we are going to see this as an individual text. However, by default, they are like the wrap content. But what we want is that it should accommodate all the width available inside that navigation drawer. So for that, what we should do is that we should use the modifier. So let's use a modifier and make this as fill max width. Also, one thing is that we do want this text to be clickable because these are the many options. So when you click on it, something should be done. So by default, text doesn't have a click listener but we can add a click listener using the modifier. So for that, what we can do is that we could call clickable and here we can specify what should happen when use the tab on the text. This we'll see later on and that's it for now. So now let me create the navigation drawer. So let me create a composable again. Fun nav dryer and it requires again the scaffold state and I'm going to tell you that why do I need this in this composable. So here I'm going to create the body content for our navigation drawer and here let's add a column because I have more than one composable. So let's add image on the top first. image resource r.drivable.alltechies. Also, I need a width and a height specified for this. So what should I do is that I should specify the modifier and the content scale. So content scale is something which I'm saying as content scale.crop and modifier as modifier dot padding as 32 dp and preferred height as 84 dp so this will be the first item inside our navigation drawer so after this image i also need a divider and from here onwards i just need a nav options so I can specify nav option and I can say something like say home and the scaffold state. Let's have a few more. Let me give this a cart to say like or say featured. So that's it. Now this is ready for us. The one strange thing is the scaffold state, what it is. So one thing is like when you tap on any of these menu options, the navigation drawer should close itself. How do it's going to do that? For that, we use scaffold state. So let's go back to our nav option once again. And here inside this clickable, one thing which we have left here is on click. So what should happen when you use a click on the text? So here, what should we do is that on the scaffold state, get the drawer state and close it. That's it. Just by this line, you can close the navigation drawer. So now we are ready. So now let's pass this nav drawer to the drawer content. It requires a scaffold state, so let's create the object for that also. So, well, scaffold state. You can see it. Remember, scaffold state. And 
and this is something that we can pass it here so that's it just by this little step our nav drawer is ready so this is just the basic way of creating a nav drawer we can also customize it we can set an elevation we can set the custom shape and we can even set the scrim color and we'll see all of them in this video itself so here is the nav drawer sample and when i drag from left to right you can see this so the one thing which is still pending is that our icon on the top our menu icon and the space between all of them so let's do that so here in the modifier we should add padding by giving padding it will automatically accommodate the space between each of them so for that what should we do is that before fill max width let's give the padding padding says 16 dp now let's give the menu icon also for the app bar so for that what do we need to do is that let's go back to our app bar and inside this top app bar we can provide the navigation icon and let's have this as icon button on click of it what should we do is that we should open our nav drawer so we should need a scaffold here so scaffold state and scaffold state dot dry state dot open also let's specify the icon that we are going to have here so we are going to use icons dot default dot menu so by this way now you'll see a hamburger icon along with this title so let's pass the scaffold state to this also now let's run and check it out one thing is that this is really not done yet because to make this scaffold state to work we should also specify inside the scaffold so here you can see that now we have a menu icon but now to make the scaffold work what should we do is that inside the scaffold we should specify scaffold state equals to whatever object that we have specified on top and that's it so by this way it will automatically sync with the existing state and give you a correct state like whether it's open or close so when you close it close the navigation drawer when you open it just open it now let's try to run this and check it out so here i'm clicking on this menu icon and here it is now when i click on any of them it just go away and one thing is like you can also see the ripple effect if you want to change the color for it then how do you can do let's check it out so for that we have our mini options and here we can also specify the ripple effect so on click and we have indication where we can have a ripple indication and this is a place where we can also specify the color so say i want this to be of yellow color so that's it by this it's going to give a yellow color ripple effect now let's also see how we can change the shape of the nav drawer so instead of having a traditional nav drawer i want it like a cut shape from the top side so we are going to do those changes here inside the scaffold but before that let's see our ripple effect that we have added so here you can see the color has been changed now okay now let's add cut shape for our nav drawer so for that we can specify as the drawer shape and we can give like a cut corner shape and say if i just want it for the top right side then i can specify top right and i can specify this in terms of dp 
also I can add the elevation elevation of say 12 dp and if I do not want this default scrim color then I can change that also and let's set the alpha color also to this copy alpha as 0.5 f that's it now let's run and check it out so rather than having the traditional nav dryer now you'll see a nav dryer with a cut shape on the top and a different scrim color along with ripple effect for the individual menu options so here it is now when i click on it here you could see this the scrim color is getting changed because this is something that we have specified and you can add any sort of color set the alpha value the recommended value here is either you set it one or two that means 10 percent or 20 percent but not to a very dark value because if you make it dark then it's not going to look good So with 20, now you could see that it will look much better than before. So that's it in this video. If you have liked this video, then hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe this channel. Also, if you want your articles to get featured on this channel, then you can write them in the comment and in the next video, I'll feature them. So stay tuned for the upcoming video and do not forget to subscribe this channel. Thank you and stay tuned.